since the last cuts that you see me do on this block I've made some changes I re-indicated the vise the the tilting table I found out was actually a couple thousands out so instead of uh, going off the squareness of the jaw I indicated the vise and I went both directions so the vise is extremely close about as close as I can get it on squareness and parallel to the ram travel so I decided to go ahead and leave the vise this way we've got our vise draw squared up there and now I'm gonna cut it this way and whenever you have a longer cut it's actually beneficial as far as your cutting time to go the longest stroke versus across this way you're cutting more material this way with minimum backstrokes it's just faster to do it that way right there so I think we're gonna finish it out in that that direction so we've got it touched off I moved it down 20 thousandths we're gonna clean this side up and I'm gonna continue flipping this until I get it square this is exactly why I wanted to do this because this is a very good practice exercise for the shaper is making a square block and getting something square to size and practice our finishing too I was going to mention that I did retouch the tool on the grinder I'm going to use cutting oil because this is more of a very light finishing cut on this side step over. We got it flipped one side again or the last side that we cut is over to our fixed jaw and we got it just touched off there you can see a little bit out of squareness on this on this cut so this thickness here between these two is approximately six inches 240 thousandths so what we're going to do is we're going to take an even hundred thousandths off of both of these sides and that should leave me approximately 40 thousandths to to make some finishing cuts on there so we we got it ready to go. We already got it moved down a hundred thousandths, so and we're ready to move. On that first half of the cut you know, I only had the cutting oil at the very leading edge of the block there and I was noticing and, he and hearing the difference in the chip as it got on further down the cut there and I believe that that cutting oil all the way down the cut is doing a better job of, of helping to eliminate chip welding on the tip of the tool and I think it's allowing for a better a better shear of that cut every pass
notice our cut pattern. This side here, no cutting oil, except for at the very beginning. So it was lubricated here as it's going through, nothing. And I noticed in this area here, it started really loading up on the tool in this, in this area. So from, from this section over is where I applied all of the cutting oil. And you can visually see a difference between here and here. Kicked up the strokes a little bit. We're just taking a very light cut on that side because that's the that's the thickness there that we don't have a whole lot to play with and I just want to get it down to our finishing sizes. So we're taking 6,000 right there. That's what I dialed in. Three lines up on the collar. fourth side now doing our squaring up 100,000 step to cut 30,000 step over and I'm using cutting oil on the whole thing now so I'm going to see if that makes a difference for the duration of the cut after this cut then I can start playing with uh, finishing tools and making nice finishes on the four sides You guys worried about that cutting oil smoke? That stuff does not bother me. I've got the door open, I got my windows open, so I've got some ventilation through here. I need to buy me a little fan though to put in here to kind of help blow some of the air out. But just in general, this cutting oil smoke does not bother me. I'm not, my face isn't over here in the breathing smoke, but I can smell it out here. But, I've always enjoyed the smell of cutting oil. I think that's what makes a machine shop smell like a machine shop. Okay, so that's the end of our heavy cutting there and like I said on the other side uh, I noticed the cutting oil making a difference on that uh, reducing the chip load or the chip welding on the cutting edge of the tool and causing the uh, the digging in that, that it does I've got some information in one of my books over I've been reading it actually shows this you know what's happening as the material is loading up on the edge of the tool and it digs in so anyway, from here, this is where we're going to go to. I, I want to uh, practice grinding in a shear tool, which is only used for finishing. And I have not made a nice, I have not attempted to make a nice finishing cut yet. So that's what we're going to try from here is uh, to go to our finishing and see what kind of really nice finish we can get on the surface there. 